Hi, my name is Marty and welcome to this video series on building your own ST style guitar kit from Guitar Kit World. In the following video, I'm gonna show you how I put together this guitar and we're gonna cover all aspects of the build, including finishing, installing your hardware, connecting up the electronics and then doing a final setup at the end. So the guitar we're working with today is an ST style guitar kit featuring a basswood body, maple neck and fretboard, Fender style classic floating trim, and of course three single core pickups. So from here, I'm gonna take the video back to the very start of the build. I'm gonna pop the guitar up on the bench and start inspecting the body for any scratches or marks. We've got the guitar up on the bench. Um, first thing we need to do is just remove this scratch plate. And we can have a closer look at the body. I'm not seeing any obvious scratch marks. Most of the time these guitars come out of the factory sanded to about 320 grit, which is generally more than enough to, to start applying a prime coat. A couple of places to just look out for are machine marks on the uh, on the bottom of the guitar. Any machine marks in around the horns as well. This neck fits particularly well. This is a maple neck and it also appears to be sanded to 320 grit. Now if your scratches are deeper than uh, the knees, I would recommend maybe a 180 grit and then working your way up to 320. Um, basically use the 180 to remove remove the scratches and then use a 240 grit to remove the, the marks left over from the 180 and a 320 grit to remove the marks left over from the 240. So just working your way up through the, through the grades of sandpaper basically until you've got no visible sanding marks left. And once this top's done, I'll start working my way around the edges as well, just in case there's any marks. So in this case, I'm using Rust-Oleum 2X flat, gate, flat gray primer. I'll probably use, probably do two to three coats of this primer. I'll follow that up with it, at least two to three coats of this Satin Lagoon Rust-Oleum as well, which is a paint and primer. And we'll finish that off with this clear gloss, which is also from Rust-Oleum uh, 2X. Okay, so I'm just outside about to apply the first prime coat to this guitar. A um, couple things to keep in mind, I'm going to be doing this near a clothesline so I can hang it, hang the guitar when it's painted. So as you can see, I've got these hooks in place already. Um, you don't want to be searching around for a way to hang your guitar after you've, um, after you've got a wet guitar in your hand. So as we've already discussed, I've prepped the body. So we'll start off by applying just a light first coat. So first thing we need to do, shake the can up really well. Start around the edges. It's really just a light dusting at this point. When you're doing a second and a third coat, what I like to do is dip the nozzle in some very hot water. So I've got some boiling water here. What I do is just dip the nozzle in that boiling water. Give a quick spray. And that just prevents any droplets, um, any heavy droplets building up around the, around the nozzle and, and ending up on your guitar, which will be a bit of a job to remove. So we'll apply a second coat, same as the first, just a little bit, um, just light again. So just a few passes over and just, just trying to get good coverage. So again, I'll start with the sides. I like to use a, a timber sanding block. It just keeps it, keeps the um, surface area of your sandpaper flat. So I'm not applying too much pressure. Sanding gently. I'm being sure to remove any, any grit as it builds up, which it will. As per the uh, prime coat of shaking the can up for about a minute. And you shake it up for a minute after you hear the rattle of the can, like so. And I start spraying as per usual. So again, we're starting with the sides first just to deal with any overlap on the back and the front that we can go over then. And again, spray in nice long patterns and overlap each time. Hold the can tightly upright about six to eight inches from the guitar. And that should do us with our first coat. So I'll leave that now, two or three minutes. A few minutes later, Okay, so I'm just about to spray the second coat. Um, same as the first, the only thing I'm doing differently, I've just dipped this nozzle in some boiling water just to unclog the tip, and I'll just spray the sides and then the front, or then the back and the front as, as per the last coat. I'll just spray the third coat, same as the first, same as the second. Be sure to shake the can up before you use it each time. I'll just start the sides again. I generally put this coat on a little bit thicker. There's lots, uh, 
lots of product there for the paint to adhere to now. I'm going to start with fairly high, high grade of paper here. I'm actually going to start with an 800. All I'm looking to do is remove that shine on the guitar body, basically. So when I when I'm sanding, what you'll see will happen is there'll be areas look shiny and then areas that are quite matte, quite dull, and that's. The areas that are dull are where the sandpaper is affecting and the shiny areas are, are still lower, which means the sandpaper hasn't affected that. The only problem today is it's, it is quite windy, so we're gonna have some dust to contend with. So I'm gonna spray this quickly outside, take it back inside and bring it back out. So I'll do three coats. We'll be applying a paint just the same as we do when we apply solid color. Make sure you've got a mask on. Give the can a good shake. And we'll be shaking this up for about 30 seconds. And start to apply your paint. So we start with the sides, top first, just to uh, we can cover any overspray that way when we do the back or the front. And um, I'll be working in long passes on the back and the front, just overlapping by about 50% each time. This first coat I'll be putting on fairly light. I'm just about to apply a third, and that'll be my final coat for today. So. Just between, um, between coats, make sure you clean the nozzle out, just so you don't get a build up, and then have you know, large droplets sort of coming out of the nozzle straight on the guitar, and then just clear out the nozzle. And we're just gonna do things the same way, so same with the sides, then dealing with any overspray from the sides by doing the back and the front. And then I'm gonna hang the guitar in a cool, sort of dry environment for the next for the next 24 hours. From there, I'll probably scuff the surface up a little bit more using some 800 or 1000 grit paper, and I'll come back and repeat the process the next day. And I'll probably do that over three days. So what I'm looking to do is get about nine coats of clear on this guitar. A lot of the time I like to do an oil finish on the back of a neck, or the front and back of a neck, I should say. But in this instance, with, um, with this S-style um, guitar, I'm going to spray it with a clear gloss, just like we did with the body. What I'll be looking to do is have a nice glossy front of the headstock, and then I'll be looking to use a steel wall just to um, give that a matte finish on the back just so that the neck's nice and fast and playable. Okay, so I've got the ST guitar back up on the bench now. It's dried for about three days since we sprayed the clear gloss. That was an acrylic, so it dries much quicker than a lacquer, for example. And as you can see, we've got that nice glossy finish. But if we hold the guitar up a little closer to the light, and you can see where the light reflects just around here, you can see that peel effect through the paint, that orange peel effect, and that indicates uneven areas in the paint. The next thing we need to do, taking an 800 grit paper, is just start sanding and trying to remove that, that orange peel effect. Now I've already been sanding in this area for a little while before I hit record on the video, so I'll hold the guitar up in a second and just show you the difference there. Hopefully this is coming up nice and clear, but this area here I've been sanding, it's far less glossy now, but it's also got less, far less of that peel effect through it. You can see as the light passes over, it sort of disappears there. Now there's still some areas, you can still see the odd, odd little spot here and there, and that just means the sandpaper hasn't taken the top off that area yet, where the rest has got that matte finish. So what we're really trying to do at this stage is get that matte finish across the whole guitar. And this stage can take a little while. I expect to take a couple of hours to, uh, to, sand, to sand this whole guitar down from here. But um, we'll then follow it up with a 1200 grit and that'll be a little bit quicker and the guitar will start to get some of that gloss look back that we're currently taking off now. Okay, so you can see, hold the guitar up now, we've got that matte finish on most of the guitar. We've just still got some of that shine on these curves. And one little trick that can help when you're sanding curves is to take an eraser and wrap some sandpaper around that. It conforms those curves a little easier. Just allows you to get, get a little more into those curves from there. Especially useful when you're doing horns, for example. Okay, so I've been sanding away for a little while now. You can see the guitar's taken on that matte finish I was talking about earlier. So next, I'm going to uh, just do a little bit of wet sanding. So I've got some 1500 grit paper here. It's been sitting in some water. Now wet sanding is a little more aggressive, so you want to be a little careful with it. But it does help because sandpaper doesn't clog up as much. It just removes some of that friction between the sandpaper and the paint. Okay, so hopefully you can see that the guitar now has been sanded mostly flat 
there's not really any evidence of that orange peel anymore on the surface. So what I'm gonna do next is apply a very fine grade steel wool. This is super fine grade steel wool. You normally pick this up at your local hardware. I'm just going to start polishing the uh, top of the guitar, just using a circular motion. Now, a lot of people aren't huge fans of using steel wool, and that's understandable. It leaves a lot of fibers on the guitar, and especially if you're gonna follow up polishing or using a buffing wheel or machinery of any kind you're going to be applying a lot of heat in in small areas on the body if you've got any of those fibers remaining on the guitar they're going to heat up and embed themselves in the paint basically so you do need to clean the guitar up very carefully after you use it that includes your cavities as well you'll find a lot of fibers in your cavities when you go to turn the guitar over it's going to get on onto your work area and um, also bear in mind your your pickups are essentially magnets so any loose fibers are going to be drawn to those so once you're finished as i said steel wool is certainly something I use but you do want to make sure you clean it up well after you finish with it. And if you like a matte finish you could pretty much leave things there. We're going to polish the guitar though now and bring back we'll get that glossy reflective look to the to the paint. So I've got a couple of grades of car polish here. I've got a heavy duty cutting compound and a super fine and I'm going to just apply some of this heavy heavy grade stuff to the to the body definitely want to make sure you've cleaned um, all those fibers from the steel wool in the previous step as well so I'm just doing a small section I'll work a section at a time just so I can compare how the guitar is looking to the areas that we haven't haven't worked on yet and I'll probably go over the whole guitar three times with each grade of cutting compound and you'll be surprised how, how much of a glossy look we can get to the to the paint when we're done you can already see that that's starting to change there and that's just after one one application really so you can see that reflective glossy finish is starting to come back to the guitar now that's after three applications of the heavier uh, cutting compound so i'm going to move to the finer grade now just to finish things off again i'm just going to work a section at a time just so i can compare what i'm doing to uh, what's yet to be done So really from here, I'm just gonna polish till I'm happy with happy with the uh, look of the guitar. So really you could probably pretty much take things as far as you want from this point. Okay, so we've got a fair bit of hardware to work with here, but I think the first thing we'll do is install the neck. So just insert the heel first and push down. Turn over. In the packaging will be a neck plate. 